everybody, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and today we are going to be talking about the hottest new trend in bunny fashion and that is the brand new pattern from Little Cotton Rabbits. It's the bags, backpacks, and baskets. It is the beginning of September here in North Carolina. Well, I guess it's the beginning of September everywhere in the world, but it's the beginning of the fall season here in the Northern Hemisphere. And let me just tell you, this is my favorite season and I get those little butterflies in my stomach. So today, yes, we're gonna talk about this little pattern, but I also wanted to talk about some of the things that I am loving right now because there's some really fun things that I think you guys might enjoy too. They are not crochet or knitting related whatsoever. They are in inspiring me right now and I think you guys might like them too but also I want to just remind you that all of the resources will be linked in the description box below so in case you want to find the yarn the pattern any of the other fun things I'm going to talk about I'm going to link them there for you when Julie Williams who is the designer behind little cotton rabbits puts out a new pattern I feel like it's Christmas morning and it is always so exciting because anything she designs anything she puts out is so beautiful it's so well done and I was so excited when she put out her bags, baskets, and backpacks pattern out. There are actually five different designs and each one has a little different variation. So there's little backpacks, there's a market tote, there's a purse, there's all of these different adorable things. But I knew because I wanted to knit a bunny, I wanted to get back to the basics. I wanted to get back to knitting and I really wanted to make a bunny and I knew that he needed a little basket and I knew that it was going to be really fun to put the little carrots in his basket basket because a bunny is going to need his snacks. These carrots, by the way, are a free pattern from Jen Hayes Creations. I'll leave a link for that for you. This was a really fun make as well, and it fits perfectly in his little basket. I decided, well, here's what happened. I ran out of this beautiful, this is the Barocca vintage yarn I used to make the basket, and I ran out of, I'm calling it like an ochre sort of a color. It's a really beautiful brown, but I ran out. I was using scraps, and I thought, oh no, what am I going to do. So I just used the oatmeal color for the strap. I actually just seamed the basket handle right onto his hand because I wanted him to be able to hold it and I didn't want to have to worry about pinning it. And I think it just looks so cute. I had a lot of fun with this. I want to tell you that I altered the pattern just a little bit because you use an eye cord for the handle. I don't know how to make an eye cord. I really didn't want to learn how to do it last night. So I just crocheted a handle and I felt like it looks great. It looks wonderful. One of these days I am going to learn how to make an eye cord but it wasn't going to be last night. Also I did a little bit of a different bind off because I was trying to do the way she had it and I just wasn't getting it. It was too late last night and I just needed something simple. So those are really the only two things. I think from this day forward every bunny I make is going to either have a backpack or a purse or a market tote or a little basket. I just think they're so fun to add these little accessories. I've been meaning to share a resource with you guys for some time now, I keep forgetting, but Julie Williams has a Little Cotton Rabbits Facebook group. If you don't know about this group, it is absolutely wonderful. Now there are several different Little Cotton Rabbits Facebook groups out there, but the one that she actually moderates, the one that she started, has parentheses after it that says official. So you will know that that's hers. I will leave a link for the exact Facebook group in the description box below. There are a few thousand members in it, and one of the wonderful things about it is that people share what they're making, but also people can kind of ask questions like, hey, I'm having an issue with this, or I don't know how to do this. And I know that there are a lot of you out there who ask me, hey, can you help me with certain aspects of the pattern? And unfortunately, that's not something that I can do on the channel because I cannot violate any of Julie's copyright materials. I can't share something very specific to the pattern. But in the Facebook group, you can ask those very specific questions. And Julie many times answers them also 
though there are so many experienced makers and knitters in that group who have made so many of the patterns and they know exactly what to do, there are also some adorable files. So some of these people, they're so talented, they come up with maybe a little bit different design or they do something a little bit different and they upload the file into the group with Julie's permission, of course. So it's a really amazing way to get super creative. You will be so inspired. And I'm telling you, this is one of the most lovely groups of people. They're always so encouraging and it's so much fun to see what other people are making and I get so much inspiration. And it's just a place that feels good and happy and I really think you're gonna love it. My new little bunny doesn't have a name yet. If you have any suggestions for a name, put it in the comments below because I really am stumped on this one. I don't know what to name him. I really love him though and one of the things that I wanted to do was to make the little sweater with the dog. So I really love this little dog sweater and it reminds me of our dog Jersey Boy and I'm gonna show you a picture of him and why this really reminds me of him. Although our dog really doesn't have that white on him, I felt like it was a really beautiful detail that I wanted to add. But one of the things that I did, <laughs> And this is one of those things where, you know, you make a mistake and then you will not forget that mistake. So what happened was, you know, I'm trying to use up my scraps. I'm trying to be very frugal and not waste any of my yarn. I was working through this pattern and I got to right here and I ran out of yarn. So I went to my stash and I grabbed a new ball of yarn and I thought for sure that it was the same color because in the dark at night looks like the exact same color. I should have looked at it a little more closely because it's not. Either they were a different dye lot. I don't have the ball bands anymore to know exactly. I have a sneaking suspicion that they're actually two different colors. You know what? It's okay. It's a little mistake. It's just for me, so it's really not that big of a deal. But um, what I'm going to do from this day forward is when I run out of yarn and I need to use a different one, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to look at it in the daylight hours to make sure that it's actually the same color. I actually shared this in the Facebook group that I made this mistake and some people were like, oh, it looks like a little ombre effect there. It's really cute. Somebody actually even suggested making little stitching around the top to make it look like a separate yoke. And I thought that was a really good idea. But for me, I'm lazy. I'm just leaving it. I'm not fixing it and I'm not doing anything <laughs> more with it because I think it looks fine and I don't think Jersey Boy is going to mind at all. And this bunny was really inspired by my sweet dog, Jersey. This is the part where I'm going to start talking a little bit about things that are really inspiring me right now has nothing to do with knitting or crocheting or amigurumi. So if you're not interested, you can just go ahead and leave. But would you please hit that like button and that subscribe button first? But anyway, if you want to stick around and hear about some of the things that I'm really loving, now's the time. For my birthday, my mom asked, what do you want for your birthday this year? And I said, you know what? There's this course I've been looking at. It's called Designer in a Binder. It is by Tasha from Kaleidoscope Living. I've been really looking at it because it's something that I really aspire to have a home that we really love. So my youngest son just left for college. So it's just left my husband, myself, and our 21-year-old son who is in community college. It's just the three of us living in our home now. So we've lived in this home for 17 years and we raised our four children here. Now by American standards, this house is small. I have 1,800 square feet and then I do have a partially finished basement, which is where my craft room is right now. So it's not really very big. It's three bedrooms, two and a half baths. It's not big. And for all of these years, I have just been making do. It is just like I have been raising kids. I haven't really had time to worry about whether a space looks pretty. A couple of years ago, we did update our flooring. We had nasty old gross carpet. And so we did get hardwood floors in our downstairs area. We got new carpet upstairs and I finally got rid of my mauve pink countertops in my kitchen. And now I have some granite that I really love and a new backsplash, the white subway tile. That was something that I had wanted to do for a really long time. So I really loved how all that looked, but still everything wasn't really put together. And it's something that I really love. And it's something that I admire in people who can make their home look beautiful. I don't have that gene. Basically my decorating style up until this point has been, oh, you know, I'm out shopping somewhere or I'm at an antique store or something and I find something and I think, oh, that's pretty. I'll buy that and stick it in my house. What I realized was that is not how a lot of these people that I follow on Instagram, they have beautiful homes. I discovered they were a little more intentional about their home design than I am. Number one, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I'm not going to hire a decorator. I am not going to do any 
any kind of big renovations in our home that is just not in the budget. We've got four kids in college and I have a very limited budget to spend on the house. I decided to get this designer in a binder, which basically walks you through how to design your home, how to do home interior decor. One of the rooms that I recently finished was my dining room. This was a room that was called our homeschool room. This is where I had all of our homeschool books. It's where we did most of our homeschooling. And really it was just a place I needed a big old table and a big old bookcase and my daughter's piano was in there. And that was what we needed at the time. Now that I don't need that space for that function anymore, I really wanted it to be beautiful, but honestly, it's just kind of an eyesore. But it's something that you see the minute you walk into my home. And it's something that I see on such a regular basis. I wanted it to be beautiful. I really wanted to be able to see my mom's beautiful brown and white transfer wear that she gifted to me when she downsized. This is what I came up with. The way the designer in a binder works is that it really helps you to discover what you love by going on Pinterest and creating boards just with things that you love. And she really walks you through the entire process. I loved doing this planning part, but it actually really got my brain working and thinking in a way that I had never ever thought of before. I've always been the person who thought, I love color, I love all the colors, colors, colors. But when I went through and did my Pinterest board, I really started to realize that I like a little bit of color, but I like a lot of neutrals, which is really new for me because that's not something that I've really gone for before. After getting this room together, I did Ikea, I did Marshalls, and then I went to our local antique mall, which is called The Depot, and I found some really unique things that I love. I picked picked up this tea canister that is all chippy and worn out and I absolutely love it. I also found this scale, this old scale, which I just think looks so fantastic. I just kind of pulled some pieces in that I had already that were in the neutrals and I made this little setting above my piano, which I think looks really pretty because this is an old beat up piano and I love it. Now for the table setting, I pulled that transfer wear out and I found these placemats at Ikea. They were really inexpensive, but I knew they were going to look great because this is just a big farm table. It could handle having the chargers with the plates stacked, and I just thought it looked really pretty. I just put a crocheted runner that I got at Marshall's, and then I found the lantern in the center was also from the Antique Mall. It's beautiful. You can put a candle, like a I would put an electric candle in that because it's wood. I found these old chippy candlesticks, and I just feel like it looked so pretty in there. The next thing I added was the rug. I also got that from Ikea. I really wanted like a jute, a sisal, something really neutral because although I love that wallpaper in the room, it was going to fight against if I tried to put an oriental rug or some kind of a color and I didn't really want to add red or I was not going to have white in there or off-white because I have a dog and a cat and we're always walking through and there was no way I was going to do that. So I wanted something that wasn't going to look dirty. I really think it looks beautiful in here. And then I just got some simple linen type curtains from Ikea as well because a beautiful light comes through there and I wanted to be able to see out into my yard and I think it all just came together in a way that just makes me so thrilled. This may not be your style but this is perfectly my style and I am so excited about this designer in a binder. I'm really going through and seeing my entire house differently now. I'm really excited to be able to kind of move into this next phase instead of raising young kids and having to make do all the time. Making this a space that we can really enjoy and love at this point in our lives. The next thing I'm really loving right now may seem like a complete contradiction to what I was just talking about with redecorating my dining room, but it is the YouTube channel, Our Rich Journey. Oh my goodness, I love this YouTube channel so very much. Anytime they put a new video out, I am going to be watching it. I love them so very much. So let me give you a little bit of a background about Aman and Christina. They are an American couple with two young girls. Basically what they have done is they retired early in their 30s and they have moved to Portugal. So they are retired. They are part of the FIRE movement, which is Financial Independence Retire Early. This is a really interesting 
interesting personal finance movement, I would call it. These are people who are dedicated to living in a way that they are able to retire much earlier than say 65, which is kind of like the median retirement age. They live in a very financially responsible way so that they can retire and live the way they want to. Now, some of the people are more interested in just the financial independence because they don't really want to retire early, but they want to have options. And what I love about this is that Aman and Christina are so inspirational. They basically share everything. They tell you exactly how they did it. They were living in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is an extremely expensive part of the US, like crazy expensive. But they were able to do so many incredible things. House hacking, they were renting, they flipped houses, they were renting out rooms in their own home, and they were making it work. I am so inspired by them. We've been a big Dave Ramsey fan for quite some time. And if you're not familiar with Dave Ramsey is a budgeting expert. He is somebody who has helped so many people get out of debt. And basically I started budgeting back in September of 2009, right in the middle of the financial crisis, because it just woke me up to the fact that I needed to get serious about our finances, about our family and how we wanted to live and that I needed to focus on it instead of just playing around. So from September 2009 until this very day, I have done a monthly budget. And I will just tell you that it has helped me so very much. Dave Ramsey saying is live like no one else so later you can live like no one else. And that is something that Aman and Christina from Our Rich Journey have done. And it's really inspiring to me because I think sometimes we can get caught up. I know I do. I get very caught up in especially Instagram and seeing what other people are doing and what they have. This is a really good balance to that to say, hey, yeah, you can have all of those things, but you know what? You're going to be working until you're 98 years old. And that's not really what I want for our family or for my husband. And we just love this channel so much. I just bought their workbook. I am really excited about just being more purposeful, more mindful about our finances. I know it's kind of weird to be talking about it on YouTube to all these strangers, but I will just say that if you are looking for budgeting advice, some personal finance inspiration, check out Dave Ramsey and the Our Rich Journey channels. They are so fantastic. There's so much good information and there's hope out there because I know right now there are a lot of people who are struggling and I know that feeling. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, but I know that by really focusing and doing a budget especially has helped us so very much. And so I would just encourage you, if you're looking for something like that, check out those channels. I'm going to leave them in the description box below for you as well. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I know it was kind of random, but I wanted to share some of the things that I'm really loving right now, including my little bunny. And I think I'm going to name him Jersey. After I started talking about the inspiration for his little sweater, I thought, you know what? Maybe I should just name him after my precious little dog. I think he kind of looks like a Jersey. Do you think you look like a Jersey? Oh, he said yes. As always, I'm so glad you're here today. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you would please hit that like button and that subscribe button, that would be wonderful. I'm going to be back next week as always, but I've got a couple other videos for you in case you would like to keep watching because I'd love for you to keep watching. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope the weather is wonderful where you are. Happy stitching!